Papa, we, we are in your presence. Let me Return to you alone in the name of Jesus. King of kings and Lord of lords, we pray that at this moment, that this place we feel with your presence. Come and cause your word to be spoken as the word of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The word that breaks yokes, the word that brings salvation, the word that lifts burdens, the word that brings encouragement. The word that heals and above all God, the word that glorifies the name of God the Father. Thank you, eternal God, because in Jesus' name we are worship. Somebody praise the Lord. Today we are continuing in the theme of the year and of the month. Divine or sufficiency taken from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. And the topic today is audacity, the evidence of hope. Audacity, the evidence of hope. We are taking a text from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. And then 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 15. I'm going to start reading from the book of 2 Corinthians 9, verse 15, verse 6 to 15. But remember this. Say to your number, neighbor, remember this. If you give little, you will get little. A farmer who plants just a few seeds will get only a small crop. I'm reading from the Living Bible. But if he plants much, he will reap much. Everyone must make up his mind, his own mind, as to how much he should give. Don't force anyone to give more than he really wants to. For cheerful givers are the ones God prizes. God is able to make it up to you by giving you everything you need and more. So that there will be not only enough for you for your own needs, but plenty left over to give joyfully to others. It is as the scriptures say, the godly man gives generously to the poor. His good deeds will be an honor to him forever. For God who gives seed to the farmer to plant, and later on good crops to, have for, to harvest and eat, will give you more and more seed to plant and will make it grow so that you can give away more 
and more fruit from your harvest. Yes, God will give you much so that you can give away much. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will break out into thanksgiving and praise and sing praise to God for your help. So, two good things happen as a result of your gifts. Those in need are helped and they overflow with thanks to God. Those you help will be glad not only because of your generous gifts to themselves and to others, but they will praise God for this proof that your deeds are as good as your doctrine. And they will pray for you with deep favor and feeling because of the wonderful grace of God shown through you. Thank God for his son, his gift, too wonderful for words. Somebody praise the Lord. Audacity. Audacity, the evidence of hope. The, uh, the motto for the secondary school I went to says, Odasis Fortuna Juvat. Odasis Fortuna Juvat. Fortune favors the audacious. Fortune favors the bold. Fortune favors the audacious. What does audacity mean? Unfettered courage. In secondary school those days, in fact, let me recognize my friend here, Joseph Ogega. He was the senior prefect that handed over to me as a senior prefect. Joseph Ogega, can we recognize you? You're welcome, Brother Ogega. You're welcome. In secondary school, those days, when you're in class two, you see class one boy passing and say, you have the animal boldness. <laughs> Audacity to pass. Need and there. So in raw terms, audacity is animal boldness. Audacity favors, I mean favor finds a way for the audacious people. Praise the Lord somebody. Audacity is the evidence of hope. And what is hope? Hope is defined by Webster Dictionary is to cherish a desire with anticipation to want something to happen or be true, to cherish with anticipation. In other words, hope is a desire with expectation. I try to draw an analogy between this, between this and the, the, the definition of demand and effective demand in elementary economics. In elementary economics, you're told that if you, you come to a place, you, you want to buy something, have some groceries, apples, and all that, and the, you say, I need, I need this, I need that. The woman packs everything together, and after he says, the price is 2,000 naira, I say, I have only 200 naira. You don't have enough backing. You can't buy. You just pack the thing and put down. And God help you. If it's a, if, if it's a very... If it's a very Nice woman, you say, sorry, you can't buy. But if it's not a very nice woman, you say, ah, oh, she. So I just come. The wahala, they say, point, point, point. You don't get money. Demand without a financial backing is just a wish, it's just a want. Effective demand is the one that has a resource to back it. After pointing all those things, you just say 2,000 naira, you can't do that and give up. Maybe even put tip, 200 naira. Say, ah, baba, So hope is a desire with anticipation. I know that every rational person desires the team of the year. The Jew has declared that this is a year of all-round sufficient, divine all-round sufficiency. We want to be sufficient all-round. But how many people are actually anticipating it with hope? Are desiring it with anticipation? You know, if, if there's an emergency somewhere there, a medical emergency, you will find out how Dr. Ali will outrun all of you here. 
there is this instinct, inbuilt instinct in doctors and medical personnel that when there's a medical emergency, you will, you will be surprised at how they will fly down to the stairs. I had such a case when Dr. John that came from the US, he was staying on the third floor in the hotel. And there was one of our uh, staff had an accident on the major road and immediately he had it. He refused to use it. The lift was too slow for him. Those who took the lift were still coming down when he was already at the gate. And for that timely use of him, but for that timely use of him, that guy would have died. And when they are running, they be running with anything they can pick as a first aid. Why? Because they have hope that they will meet the guy alive to be able to save him. But the person who does not have hope is, ah, yeah, he has a sitting on my show, may God help. That is the difference. Praise the Lord, somebody. Today we'll be looking at audacity, how audacity drives and helps us to derive our hope. From three standpoints, we're looking at audacity of our thought, the audacity of our speech, and the audacity of our action. Audacity of our thought, audacity of our speech, and the audacity of our action. Audacity of our thought. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 says this. Guide your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. New Living Translation. King James Version says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. What is in your heart determines the course of your life. Everything in life starts from thought. Everything happens first spiritually before it happens physically. First of all, somebody imagined that, looked at a bird and said, look, bird is flying. He has a super highway that's unlimited. It's possible to create an artificial bed that can also do what the birds are doing. Even more, because it can carry loads and do a lot of things. It started from imagination. Praise the Lord, somebody. They say what well, Disney was one day sitting down, and one of his staff came around and was greeting him. He was not even asking, he was not hearing. And he touched, had to touch him. What was wrong? You seem to be lost in thought. He said, I'm looking at my mountain. He said, which mountain? I can't see anything. It's, it's like you're going crazy. He smiled. When they were opening the Disney World, the MC said, it's unfortunate that Walt Disney is not alive to see the mountains he was creating. When it was the time of his wife to speak, he came up and said, "Lo, it was you people who didn't see the mountain. Walt Disney saw the mountain way before now. He saw in his vision, he saw in his imagination, he saw in his thought. Be audacious in thinking. Don't think small. Think big. Praise the Lord, somebody. You cannot have all sufficiency until you begin to think big. But thinking big doesn't mean you must start big. Think big, but learn to start small. Hello. This is what Paul says to us in the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. He said, and now brothers, as I close this letter, let me say this one more thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, good and right. Think about all these things, the things that are pure and lovely and dwell on fine good things in others. Think about all you can praise God for and be glad about the living Bible. Fix your thoughts on what is true, good and and right. What do you see? What do you see? Begin to see what is good. Begin to see what is pure. Begin to see what is right. The biggest problem I have with the youth these days is their unbelief. Unbelief in this country. I was in a conference yesterday where the main speaker, the keynote speaker was Aki Adeshino, the former minister of agriculture. The now is the president or MD of African Development Bank. Somebody who is not just anybody. And he was talking about this country, about how much future. Yes, there are issues 
We cannot, we cannot undermine that. We cannot deny that. But the truth is, even in those issues, there are so much potentials. India wants to be here. China wants to be here. Everybody wants to be here. What are they looking for? Open your eyes. Open your mind. They're not coming for jamboree. They are coming to take something. Those things are first of all yours. Look, open your eyes, open your mind, and you see them. Hello, somebody. Praise the Lord. Begin to think of how this country will be good and when it's going to return. Yeah, we'll talk about there was a country. There can still be a country. You and, and I can make it happen. But we have to first of all begin to create the country of our dream in our mind. It must happen first in our thought. As long as you keep condemning and condemning and condemning, we're going to speech. We'll talk about that. Think about things that are pure and lovely and dwell on fine good things in others. Think about what is good for others. The Lord himself said to us that the best law, the, 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 the whole law is about love. Love God with all your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. The golden rule. Let's begin to love ourselves. Let's begin to love our neighbors as ourselves. Begin to think of what is good in others. Stop backbiting. So saying good things about, bad things about people, gossiping, let's focus on their good aspects. And if there's anything negative you want to do, discuss it with him. Praise the Lord. Think about all you can praise God for and be glad about. There's so much to, be, to, to praise God for. The fact that we're alive and healthy. Wake up in this morning, you can go to the toilet on your own without any aid. It's the beginning of it. You can stay here freely worshiping God Almighty, seeking his face. There can't be a better place to be. Praise the Lord. There's so much to thank God for. A living dog is always better than a dead lion. Irrespective of what challenges we are, we have hope because we are alive. Praise the Lord. These thoughts from our hearts determine the course of our lives. But these good thoughts don't come naturally. You have to be deliberate. You have to be audacious about cultivating them. You have to begin to cultivate them. They don't just come naturally because nothing good comes easy. You have to be deliberate about it. Praise the Lord. For time, let me quickly move, for, move quickly to the next point. The audacity of speech. The audacity to, of speech. Say unto them, as truly as I live, said the Lord, as he has spoken in my ears, so will I do unto you. Numbers 14, 28. In the book of Numbers chapter 13 and 14, you hear about how God asked Moses to send spies to go and look and that will call it recognizance. To go and see what the land of Canaan looked like. And when they got there, the 12 of them, they saw that in truth, the land flowed with milk and honey. They brought samples of the food, the fruits in that place. They were so, they were so great. But only two people were positive. The other ten were saying, eh, hey, yes, in spite of all these things, we saw there, like in Nigeria, we're seeing oil, you see gold, you see human resources, you see population, strength and population, big market. The other people are seeing the market. We are not seeing the market. We're only seeing bad government. We're only seeing bad roads. In spite of these things, we saw the sons of Anak there, the Goliaths, the big giants. Ah, in our eyes, we are like grasshoppers like unto them. And so were we in their own eyes. Hey, Caleb and Joshua said, no, stop that. We are well able to go and take them on and wipe them out. God has given them all. They are like bread to us. These people said, no. The children of Israel started weeping, shouting. Oh, God. Oh, God. Let's stone them. Began to say they want to stone the people. And God got angry and said to Moses, tell these people, as they have spoken in my ears, so will I do. What are you saying into the ears of God today? Hello. It's a year of all around divine, divine all around sufficiency. And somebody will say, ah, sufficiency in all these things. Look at this one. Listen only to bad news. Leave bad news alone. As you speak into the ears of God Almighty in the morning and in the evening, so will he what? Do. We know the story of David and Goliath. 
when Goliath was tormenting and taunting the armies of Israel and telling them, come out, bring out one person, I will kill you, I will do everything. And David came and heard them and said, well, for crying out loud, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? That is defying the armies of the Almighty God. And then when he, they told him, he said, what they will do for him? the person that will finish him? They told him, he went and asked another person, they would tell him, and then he went to the king. The king said to him, ah, this one is a trained one. You are not trained. You are not. He said, look, God has trained me. With my hands, I kill bears, and I kill lions, and this one will be like one of them. And then see, when Goliath and David were face to face to speak, the Goliath had talked and shouted and said, I'm going to you come with me. You think like a dog, you come with spear, with ordinary catapult. Look what David said. David shouted in reply. He didn't say David whispered. He didn't say David scampered. He didn't say David was cowed. David was audacious. David shouted in reply, you come to me with sword and spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of armies of Israel, heaven and of Israel, the very God whom you defied. Today, the Lord will conquer you and I will kill you and cut off your head and then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And Israel will learn that the Lord does not depend on weapons to fulfill his plans. He walks without regard to human means. He will give you to us. Praise the Lord, somebody. David shouted. What is that circumstance? Shout at it. Shout at that circumstance. Tell him in the name of God. And David, the beautiful thing here about that, you come to me with a sword and a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heavens and armies. David was strategic in speech. Presentation is very important. David did not come to Goliath and tell him, you know, I kill lions, I can kill you. I kill bear, I can kill you. Say, I come to you in the name of the Lord God of heaven's armies. It wasn't David fighting anymore. Strategy. David presented, he, he detached himself and put God on the spot. In your circumstance, put God on the spot and see what God will do. Present the case in such a way that it is the name of God that will be glorified. And God will take over the battle. The only thing that moves God is when you begin to engage, anything wants to engage with God in the battle of supremacy, that thing is dead on arrival. Hello, somebody. David didn't present himself, he presented God. He said, It's not me. You are defying the God. Of the armies of heaven. He said that God will kill you. Praise the Lord. I said and the whole world will know. That there is a God in Israel. And Israel will learn. That the Lord does not depend on weapons. God does not depend on human resources. To do what he wants to do. He said I am the almighty God. All knowing, all powerful, all present. Is there anything too hard for me? The Almighty, He doesn't depend on the circumstance. We just speak the word. All we need to do is to believe Him. Believe him. Jesus spoke to his disciples in, in, in the book of John, chapter 14, verses 12 to 14, he said, In solemn truth I tell you, anyone believing in me shall do the same miracles I have done, and even greater ones, because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask me for anything. Did you say you can ask him for some things? Hello? Anything. Using my name, and I will do it. For this will bring praise to the Father because of what I the son will do for you. Yes. Ask anything using my name and I will do it. The living Bible. Ask anything. You know when he was passing, blind Bartimaeus had some noise 
And yeah, what, what's going on there? There's some rumble. Something is happening there. He said, ah, Jesus of Nazareth is passing. Hey, Jesus. Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. And the people say, hey, shut up. In fact, when they say shut up, they say time for you to speak out. Hello. It's gold. Silence is not always golden. They say time to speak. And they say time to refrain from speaking. But at that time to speak, you must speak. They said, shut up. He refrain from speaking. Jesus is passing you. You're talking. He shouted him out. Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. He, saw, he, saw. he was shouting. Ah. I reckon Jesus would say, ah, I can hear my name at the background. Who is, who is, who is shouting my name? What's that? Ah. Not with that here, boy. See, that one blind, 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 but he must just making noise. Eh. Blind. And he's calling my name. Ask him to come. I want to see him. There are times you speak, the doors will open. Speak into the ears of God, the doors will open. Praise the Lord, somebody. And when he came, he said, what shall I do for you? Kasparov says, when you're about to make a move, have, have a goal, have an objective, and then come back and begin to walk your objective step by step. Some people just make move in life. Just talk. Not just talk. If talk more. Say you must speak. Don't just speak anyhow. Because there are some speaking that people in trouble. You have to speak constructively. Praise the Lord, somebody. I need the spirit of God to guide you. I want to speak. Be that blind, but I'm did not begin to, 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 to parambulate and dance around. Some people will say, okay, let me go and think of what you will do for me. There was an understanding there was somebody that helped one guy he eventually became a governor and they saw right into him somehow in an occasion we wouldn't have been able to see him but somehow I saw him he said what can I do for you he said let me go and think he was never, never able to see the guy again until he left office be half objective from the one be purposeful praise the Lord somebody what do I do for you straight to the point that I may receive my sight and they got it Praise the Lord. Let me run to the third point. Time. Time. The audacity of action. This is where the rubber meets the road. The audacity of action. For what does he profit, my brethren? Do a man say he had faith and has no works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto him, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, notwithstanding, you give, him, you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath no works, is dead, being alone. Praise the Lord. There's a time to think, there's a time to speak, and there's a time to walk. There's a time to act. Bobby Fischer, the great chess master from America, said, I don't believe in psychology. I believe in good moves. Psychology is when you play gambit. You make a move thinking that the other person will not see it. You want to deceive. What if he sees it? You're dead. Don't play gambit with life. Don't be taking chances. That's what it means. Taking chances. You go and you want to, because they say it's all, all year all around uh, sufficiency. You go and start playing, uh, what, what is, it, is it, Niger Bet or all those pool. You want to become trillionaire overnight. No. Go and do the right thing that will surely take you there. Life is not a matter of chance. Praise God. Let's make the right moves. Change your seed. Change your seed. There's this popular maxim that says that one, one, one level of, of insanity or one type of insanity is to continue to do the same thing over and over again and expect a return result. If you want to have a greater result, you want to have a greater yield, change your seed. Don't plant the seed you planted last year. You planted last year. 
God had given me this revelation a long time ago. And practically almost every year, I change my offering. Sometimes it can be challenging. Sometimes it can really be challenging. But I change it. And I have never had cause to regret it. And I can assure you that you will never regret it. Change your seed. Change your offering. Be the first. Be audacious about it. Be the first to seek peace. It doesn't matter who found the who, who was at fault. Be the first to give. Extend good gestures. Be audacious. Make the first move. Make the first move. Change your seed. Change your way of thinking. Change your, the way you're doing things. Are you an employer? Increase the benefit of your workers. Are you a worker? Be the first to be in the office. Give more. Give more hours. You never lose. Praise the Lord. We just employ somebody in our business center and he has really not worked for three months. Normally, probation period, a standard is six months. But I stepped in a few days ago. I said, look, this, where is this? who is this boy? Where do you forget him from? They say, so, so, so. I say, increase his salary by 25% and confirm him immediately. Praise the Lord. Because the guy is good. You never lose giving out more. If you, if you, you think if you're giving out more and you're truly giving out more and they don't recognize you, God will send people who will come around and they will notice you and they will take you away from there. The same thing, if you're an employer too and you're treating your people very well and some people are taking you for granted, what good workers will be sent your way. And those ones will just come and oust those other people. You never lose giving out more. Much more when you now sow in the field of God. Much more when you sow in the field of God. It's time to begin to give more for evangelism and mission. That is what is I. That's the heartbeat of God. That's what is the heart of God. That's what's at his heart. Mission and evangelism. Begin to sponsor it more. People are in the field. They need logistic support. Without logistic, they will, everything will fail. No system can survive without good or logistic support. No. We have to be courageous about it. Every war general knows that of all the attributes of a good general, the most important is, is, is courage. Courage. Let's stand up courageously. Let's become audacious in whatever we do. As Christians, let's be audacious. Speak about Christ. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. The two Hebrew children told the king, I said, look, we don't give a damn. We know, first of all, that we have a God that's able to save us. But let me tell you, even if he decides not to, even if he decides not to, it doesn't change anything. We still will not bow down to your image. That's audacity. And God came in in the situation. When they were put in the furnace of fire, those who threw them to the fire were all burnt by fire. But the three guys was met by the Lord himself. That one came out there and joined them. And that one changed everything. And the king said, ah, I see the fourth man is like the son of God. And the confession and narrative changed completely. May God change confession and narrative because of you in the name of Jesus. It is as the scriptures say, the godly man gives generously to the poor. His good deeds will be an honor to him forever. For God, who gives seed to the farmer to plant, and later on good crops to harvest and eat, will give you more seed to plant and will make it grow so that you can give away more fruit from your harvest. See, where there are levels of blessings. You are blessed at a time you have enough just to eat. Then that's a, a level of blessing. There's another level of blessing. 
where you now can marry a wife and feed her. There's another level of blessing where you can now pay your children's school fees and build a house. There's another level of blessing where God makes you a blessing. Hello. Anywhere you step into, people are clapping because they know something will drop. If there's an occasion and they, they want to do something in the village, they want to raise money, if you show up, ah, the occasion has been, become successful because they know that you will pay the money. Hello, somebody. That's when God makes you a blessing. Somebody runs on you, a child, an orphan, a widow runs, and then you can meet the person's needs. You are a, that time, you are a blessing. You are not just blessed. You have become what? A blessing. And that's what God is recommending for us here. He said that when you give, keep giving to the poor, give to the needy, pay in, solve, make sure that God's work does not suffer for by reason of money. That the king's business does not suffer loss. At that time, he said, God will make you a blessing. He said, we give you so much so that it's not just enough for you, but you have more than enough to keep giving out. Praise the Lord. In conclusion, we shall also remember as we desire to have all sufficiency that Christ said to us, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? So in all you're getting, first of all, let's get salvation. Let's make sure that we have given our life to Christ. Praise the Lord. And then the second thing to bear in mind is that God is giving you this thing so that you use it for good works. He's not giving you this thing for you to use it to intimidate those below you. It is that we may use it for what? For good works. Praise the Lord. Are we here? You've not given your life to Christ once? You just raise your hand. I'll pray with you wherever you are. If you're watching us online, you know you're not giving your life to Christ, just put your hand in your chest. Lord, as many as are saying this, they want to give your life to you, I pray God Almighty that you will receive them. Forgive their sins, O oh God, and accept them today and let them become your children in Jesus' name.